Click the link now to subscribe. من الرحيم نوت الأربعين نوت ليت كاف الخل والسلوك والصيام في هذا المجلس يا رب العرش العظيم نن always a reminder for myself and عبد الله جيس الضعيف مسكين وظالم وجهل but for the grace of Allah زوجال that we are still in existence and we took a path in which to be nothing. That anyone has questions, uh, help me at nurmuhammad.com and that to keep the line of communication open, ask the questions that you have, the encouragement of asking the questions online. If anyone has a question that they think is appropriate for the entire audience and within the same subject matter of meditation, tafakkur. Alhamdulillah if they don't answer it or don't ask the question, don't be discouraged. Sometimes it may not be relevant and it's difficult to go from A to Z, Z to X and keep bouncing back with all sorts of different directions because there's a live audience listening and we just confuse them at home with all the different subject matters. <laughs> so it's, a, it's not that they're disrespecting anyone but it's maybe not appropriate for the, the live audience. But you can email them and email the questions that you have. The biggest concern is to make our tafakkur in our contemplation, how to make the connection and how to develop that relationship with the Divinely Presence. And we said before that there are many people teaching two plus two, two plus two, two plus two but they don't give the answer and everything from Islam is an answer, every hadith leads to an answer. And if in these days the person teaching is not giving the answer that is necessary for our survival in days of difficulty. That when Allah describes oppression and when you have oppressed yourself, run, jauka, run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and it's the tenet of our very belief that before you can understand Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, you have had to have mastered A'uzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Means that of all the knowledges and all the realities, you're going to build off of a solid foundation. And it can't be built off of a cliff. So, means when someone doesn't know this key, then everything they built their knowledge on is on a cliff, it has no foundation like quicksand. So the importance of all knowledge, all reality, every type of difficulty is what is Allah want when He tells us to seek refuge, Say, seek refuge a'uzu billah in that ilahiyat and in that divinity. Seek refuge in the billah from shaitanir rajeem. So where are we going to seek refuge in Allah from shaitan? When He's everywhere, His every place and every location is shaitan. So awliya come into our life and teach that this key and this reality of opening everything is to understand that we have to run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad That is the key and the solution. That our life is to run to that presence and by running into that presence we are unlocking the key, the most important key of A'uzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Then every knowledge <coughs> its foundation will be correct. Right? If you pour your knowledge on anything other than that, it's not correct. It has a chance of flipping. There are many who… scholars who started off talking, you know, interesting hadiths, last days this, this one this, this one this, this one. They became popular, popular, popular but the foundation was never about Muhammadun Rasulullah So later on you can see then how that knowledge began to deviate. 
and just became like, you know, just telling your own stories. And the reality of Auzu wasn't understood that the tariqah is to come and say, make no man more important than the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad There is no zikr, no khatim, no nothing you can do more powerful than Salawat al-Nabi There's no one that you can love if your love is not complete and kamil for Sayyidina Muhammad and there is no love that can save you if your love is not for Sayyidina Muhammad Because that which you love that's imperfect is imperfect, so that's an imperfect love. That which has even a drop of ignorance or imperfection is not common and not perfected. And so for every Prophet of Allah He gave them an imperfection. That's why Sharia describes Shafat al Qubra. The debate about intercession on a scale on this earth and they all agree with the grand intercession of the Day of Judgment. When every Prophet will gather their nations and they come to Sayyidina Adam his nation and say, intercede for us, say, I can't, I sinned, I ate from an apple and we fell. How I can represent Allah I have a deficiency in my account, go to the one whom is more pure. They go to Sayyidina Nus, I can't, I, I actually prayed for azab on my nation and Allah flooded and killed them all. <laughs> Isn't that the one he's going to intercede for creation? Nabi Musa said, I can't, I hit someone with my hand and he died. And Sayyidina Isa said, oh boy yeah I can't, they took me as God. And you don't know it now, wait in a few months when you start hearing about His presence on earth and He start calling Himself God. He's coming, the anti one to call Himself a Rabb and Lord on this earth. And Sayyidina Isa is going to say, I can't this people they, they took me as an ilah because I showed too many miracles which was against the adab of Sayyidina Muhammad So khuluq al azim is then the… is the key for all realities. And that's why Allah then teaching, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهَ If they won't and you think Allah is speaking to this little dot on this planet and the what is it, the billion of us sitting here? Or this Qur'an is for all of creation. What sound and what manifestation it has on, on every planet and every crack and crevice of this entire universe is under the command of Holy Qur'an. Allah's ancient command is a command to all the angels, to all the prophets, to all the jinn, all the creation. We know in what we don't know, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ Allah. An ancient order, like, don't come to me. I have no interest in you f unless you are fatabiuni, unless you are following the way of Sayyidina Muhammad he is Sayyidina Sirat al-Mustaqeem. This is our key, this should be the key for whatever you listen to. You listen say, oh this is a good speaker. Yes, because Prophet described their tongue in the last days will please you because the qirat is perfect, their Arabic is perfect. And Arabs are the worst in belief, the worst in belief, most in munafiqeen and hypocrisy and kufr. And these are Allah's words, Surah Tawbah verse 97. 
Don't take because their Arabic is good and, and you think it's entertaining for you. But the words have to match the belief. We're seeing now the whole Arab world what they're doing with Allah gave them of their zaban and their language. And they say, we're the chosen ones and we know this language. You know the language, you don't know the deen, what are you doing? You have more Christmas ornaments in your stores than the celebration of Milad al Nabi We won't go into that, <laughs> the poopoo -poo train, <laughs> they built skyscrapers, the barefoot Bedouin, barefoot because they belong in the desert playing with the camels. They made themselves Adam for us. They came and pretended that they were big human beings. But they really like to take their shoes off and run in the desert. And they built this huge five diamond structure buildings. And did you know that they don't even have the ability for their waist to go into the ground? So the poo, poo trains of Dubai, six miles long of trucks that have to come into the city just to take the waste of those buildings and then drive them back out into the desert. Last days it's the time of deceit where Allah asks, you have eyes but you don't see. You think this is the place of glitter and glamour. And you see it to be, oh so beautiful, let's all go there. But you don't see behind the scenes that Allah doesn't even let them to put their waste into the ground, they have to take it by trucks to take it out. What happens if in difficulty, four days of difficulty, who's going to drive those trucks out? They'd be swimming in that. It's all a facade. All the bad characteristics, these are the days in which to… Don't be impressed by the qirat of somebody but go to the depth of the reality of what they're talking and it should be based on the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So you verify yourself Surah the tawbah which is the gate and the bab of all these teachings. Verse 97. Al Arabu Ashaddu Kufran wa Nifaqan O Ajdarru Alla Ya'lamu Hududa ma anzala Allahu ala Rasoolihi Wallahu Alimun Hakeem Ameen Sadaqallah Alladhi wa Barakta Rasooli Kareem The meaning the Arabs of the desert are the worst in unbelief and hypocrisy and most fitted to be in ignorance of the command which Allah hath sent down to His Messenger. But Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Mm, they gave the most trouble to Sayyidina Muhammad So means these are the days to be careful with our belief. The key for belief and understanding and knowledges and reality is in the awzu. If the formula is not telling us to run, run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Your safety is in the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad In the love and in the khuluq, in the character. There's some who adhere to the sunnah but they're very angry and mean. So it's an ingredient how to bake a perfect love. One must have the pot called Muhammadun Rasulullah Its main ingredients must be immense love, immense good character, every type of goodness and tolerance and patience. Then it is going to produce the beatific Muhammadan flowers, we call Gulil Muhammadi, the perfected roses 
of the Divinely Paradises and Divinely Gardens. Mm. This is what we're in search of, this is what our whole life, whatever you're listening to, whoever you're listening to, if the solution is not running to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad there is no man on this earth who can promise to help you and save you that he can't save himself. Don't forget that. The only salvation and safety is if we ran to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's why they're emailing that, I'm sick, I'm not feeling good, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, okay. There's no man that can help you, there's no one that you can email that takes away your problem. Only help is in the love of Allah that love of Allah is to love Sayyidina Muhammad That's why then they'll ask you, are you doing your practices? We'll make du'a for you, no problem. But are you praying for yourself too? Are you doing your salawats? Are you doing these teachings? If these teachings are coming from the, the presence and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad then are you doing the tafakkur that he's inspiring and teaching? You're doing your wudu, you do your practices to keep your energy, you, you stick with your wudu, you do your awrad, you do your salawats, you do all your salah, you do all your practices. When you do those it's a sign of love for Sayyidina Muhammad. What did we think loving Prophet was? We want him to be happy with us. We want him to look and say, This mashallah, this from my nation. Look, look, this ambassador is from my nation. Look how he struggles with himself or herself, he does his practices, he does everything he's supposed to do, he tries his best or her best to have the best of character. Every father feels that pride and they feel the shame if the child does the reverse and does bad and does bad and does bad. You have to bail them out from everything, bail them out from school fights and school problems all the way until you get into dealing with the police. That's not something that Prophet wants to keep bailing you out from Allah's punishment. So it's no difference. We understood our life is a reflection. Why Sayyidina Muhammad described that your married life is half your deen? Because he says, no, as soon as you become married you're going to understand what ummah means. How your child and, and family, how you're responsible how you're, you, you have to take care of them and keep everything together. Now we understood the immensity of this love. We want him to be proud of us We try our best for our salah, all our practices, all our readings, all our recitations, every zikr and every durood and everything that we can do. And then we gain the nazar, then we support. As we support then we give our khidmat and give my time. All of these become evidence of love. We're not the people I debate with other people or talk with other relatives that are of a different faith. So you don't pray, I pray in my heart. Oh you're one of those. Yeah I'm good with God, I pray in my heart, get out of here. There's no love that doesn't expose itself and show itself. Islam's first step was to give your shahada, why? Allah knows your faith, if He gave it to you He gave it, if He didn't He didn't but Allah wants you to know your faith. That give your shahada, remind yourself you're Muslim before you're doing these things. What are you doing? Wake up. Allah didn't need to hear it, Allah wanted me to hear it. Same, why Allah needs my salah? Say, no you pray because you're about to do bad things. Remember, as soon as you pray remember, I am your creator and you are my servant. And salah is a reminder and tarbiyah, a, a, a discipline upon ourselves. It's not for God, it's not for Allah it's for myself. If I'm not disciplined enough to do these practices then we understand this is then the difficulty. 
So we do all that we do for the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad Did your zakah, you did your salah, you did all your awrads, you did your salawats. You should have a tasbih always with you. In front of people put it away so they don't have your nafs involved. When no one's around you're doing salawat all the time, driving doing your salawat all the time. Is there a moment that you think I would die and I wouldn't be making salawats? The Ya Rabbi if I get in an accident now at least they find me with a tasbih in my hand praising upon your Divinely Presence because that durood the sharif is the highest zikr of Allah Not the zikr Allah, 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 Allah doesn't need that. Allah said, Inna Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalloon ala nabi Allah's zikr is to praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why that praise is Allahu ma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad So means everything that we're doing. This is a solution for many emails that are coming in, should I listen to this, can I do this, can I do that, do whatever you want. If the solution is not pulling us in the direction of Sayyidina Muhammad and there's not a human out there that can claim to give you salvation, to help you, to lift you, to do anything. If it's not involving the formula of the love and supremacy of Sayyidina Muhammad it sets every love perfect. There's no family member of the Prophet's family that will save you. There's no companion that will save you and there's no white bearded person that will save you if we don't have the love of Sayyidina Muhammad It's supreme, it's supreme. Without that love and that's why the shaykh has to start with the foundation, do your durood, do your salawats, attend the mafil, attend these associations. Because that's the supreme love, that's the love that Allah is only, only interested in. Allah didn't mention anything else in Qur'an, Allah mentioned this love. Why? Because as soon as we make our salawat, as soon as we make our durood, feekum, He's inside you. Because you made one salawat, the light and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is now entering into you, Haris alaykum bil mu'mineen huwa ra'ufun raheem. Every reality of Allah's description of Prophet is entering within you and your heart is actually becoming the Kaaba. And Prophet is the greatest defender of the Kaaba, shahidan inside you he's witnessing everything, mubashiran Every emanation and tajalli and blessing is coming from who? Between me and you and Allah? Allah sending you tajallis because so happy and excited about your existence? Or that you have the light of Prophet inside you and Allah is always sending blessings upon that light, tajallis upon that light, love upon that light. You become the lucky recipient of that light. That's why, Lagi jani boom 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 lagi How they achieve these blessings? Because this light came in into the heart. The Muhammadan light entered into the heart. Inna fatana khfatan mubina. This light and this opening that the light of Prophet has entered into your heart. He's bringing these tajallis, he's bringing mubashiran, he's bringing Allah's happiness, satisfaction, joy and pleasure. Every tajalli from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad is dressing that servant's heart because of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad within you. Then, then when you love Prophet naveeran. He's going to tell you, now that me and you, we, I love you, you love me, I want you to love my family, respect them and love them. Samina Watana, your word upon my head and you do everything in your life to show that love. That I want you to love my companions that gave their lives for me. 
Fadait Basham that I say, oh let me to die in their way that they be happy with me because you love them and they loved you. Now the Prophet will guide us, this one no, this one yes. You tell me if your heart is filled with that love, immense love of Sayyidina Muhammad he's not guiding and calibrating for you? And if his love is overwhelming you, he doesn't guide you to his, his love too? Like a magnet he'll draw you to other Muhammadans. If they're not drawn to you they don't have that love. When his love overtakes you, you find every Kaaba, you're drawn to it. In all this city they're not drawn to it. If that love is there you'd be drawn to the Muhammadan reality because his Prophet inside of you pushing you and guiding you, directing you. That's what it meant to be muqaddam, that you follow on my steps, my light is in your heart, my love is in your heart, your love is in my heart. You move where I tell you to move, you love who I tell you to love and everything about them is a reflection. Everything is to seek the rida and satisfaction, Lahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob, I beg your forgiveness and seek your satisfaction, Illahi. The Divinely Presence and asking the Divinely Presence which encompasses Allah's might and majesty and is under the authority and sultanat of Sayyidina Muhammad Illahi anta maqsoodi, I'm begging your forgiveness. Forgiveness of who? Of Prophet Guide me, be within me, your light to overwhelm me and command me to keep away from what Allah doesn't want and to do what Allah will be satisfied and pleased with and the rida and satisfaction of Allah be upon. Because if Allah and I'm moving in the way that Allah is happy and I have this immense love, imagine then your life is a blessed life filled with lights and fragrances. So it means in these days and all these questions that are coming in of, of doing this and doing that, the most supreme and most supreme and foundation for everything is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Is someone drawing you to that love? Do you feel in your heart that that love has increased? Then good tidings to you for you are successful on your journey. Is from what you covet of life of badness and bad character being taken out for everything that you give of your time, of your wealth, of everything Allah has given to you, it creates a void. And Allah will replace that void with the love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad You understand the giving? People think a giving is something going to be taken and they fall short in life. But Allah no, your being is like an inventory of garbage. When Allah opens the heart all that you possess in life is garbage that has no value to your akhirah. As soon as you give in the way of Allah to these servants who talk this reality and they walk this reality, everything you gave from that closet Allah exchange it with Muhabbat al-Nabi Then Allah describes back in Surah Tawbah, this is the gate of our whole journey is Surah Tawbah, that they made an exchange, they took what they they had of dunya they gave it. But Allah gave something exchange, nothing is wasted in Allah's way. When you give from your dunya Allah gives you akhirah instead. And the greatest akhirah is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad for you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when sickness comes. Grief and calamity is a, is a character that waits at every door. And you don't know when he's going to ring that doorbell. At that time is not the time to make your bargain. He's here, 
shut the door, now let me start to do something. But make your bargain now, make your approach now, make your deen real now. They give all these formulas, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the clever tongue but doesn't lead us to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And when we found the love of Sayyidina Muhammad then know that his hand is there and everything you do the hand of Prophet is taking and in exchange filling that heart and that soul with all its realities. So on the day that they leave and pass from this world, from whatever Allah wants them to pass with, they have a hisab and an account and a love with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.